Now that Valentine's Day is over, I can show you these uh, nifty cool rings that I um, crafted uh, for me and my wife for Valentine's Day. She was quite pleased with them and uh, I was quite pleased with them as well because it was another outlet. Um, we I talk all the time trying to reuse stuff, not throw stuff away, and this is a perfect example of that. I bought some time ago a veneer sampler pack um, just to see you know what different woods were different veneers type of stuff so um, and I've had a little bit of use for it but I haven't had a whole lot of use for it so I came across this um, uh, guy on a website or on the uh, on the YouTubes and I'll put a link down here who was making these um, I've um, uh, kind of put my own spin on it a little bit um, he finishes his with cyanoacrylate or super glue um, I of course have used hey go ahead and say it uh, true oil um, but that's my it's my personal preference um, they're easy they're relatively easy to make I mean I can make them uh, if I can make them well, I know you can make them um, so uh, I'm just going to show you uh, the basic uh, construction technique some of the um, design considerations that um, uh, that I have to use uh, or that I choose to use um, and and we'll just kind of we'll just kind of go from there so veneer uh, veneer wood rings next buy uh, say this veneer sampler pack it's going to come in sheets like this roughly um, and there are many different types of you're going to see different kinds of, of cuts first of all wood different all across the board um, very easy to bend and break um, and this is a piece that I you know it's not really suitable to to use. Now I used it in my first two rings, and and there are some issues with it. Here's a here's a different piece of it. You can see this. Here we go. Here's a different piece um, of it. Uh, huge holes in it. Um, uh, pore holes, grain holes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the problem is that you've got these holes that you're going to have to fill up um, with the, the super degluage. I don't really speak French, just made that up. Um, so there's something that you're going to have to have to take into account. Something else you're going to have to take into account is what that wood is going to look like when it is finished. Um, this wood here, even though, um, and this is just naphtha, even though when you wet it down, it just kind of darkens up and you can see some you can see some, you know, if it were maple, we would call it flame or some quilt to it. Um, you can see that in there. Um, it's got a green tint to it. I don't know if you can pick it up in this or not. It's green. Um, so while I use these in my first ones, I'm probably not going to use these in subsequent ones unless somebody wants green. Um, so that's something you're going to have to you're going to have to think about. Um, this one turns, you know, a little more golden color. And remember, you're going to be looking at it from the edge, like this. We don't look at these. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So when you're just looking at pieces and whether or not you think you want to use them, I wet down a little bit of it and just kind of see what it does. Does it look nice when it's wetted down? Um, is it 
flat at all. This piece, this piece of, uh, I don't know, I don't know if it's a burl or what, it's not flat at all. It's like the wavy gravy looking thing. And even though it looks really nice when you let it down, I don't know that I would use that just because it's going to be uh, El Pano de Quiestro. I don't speak Spanish either, not a single lesson. Um, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for dark and I'm looking for light. I'm looking for contrast. And these two, the edges would contrast up rather nicely. I'm trying to get that in the shot again. If I put these two together, they'll contrast up somewhat nicely. Here's another burl. Don't know that I would use this because as you can see, I mean, it's like a potato chip. That one I might not use. This one I probably would use just because it has some flatter areas. It's a nice piece of quarter sawn oak, maybe. I don't know. It's a nice quarter. It's got some nice. Let's do this. So you can really see that kind of come out. And again, you're not going to see it so much. But you're just looking for generalities. You know, you're looking for something that is nice. And is this one going to go reddish? Yeah, see that one will go red. And that against a nice piece of blonde. And maybe backed with a you know another piece of red or something dark like that. Now you can get some kind of interest going. So to do that, kind of pick out your initial woods that you're going to use, and then uh what I do is I start making, I call them ring blanks, for lack of a better term. I start cutting strips half an inch wide, or an inch and a half wide, like this. And then I start cutting them uh, so that they're an inch and a half square. And it is nothing really, this is not like making guitars. This is not super precise stuff. That is not a terribly straight edge and yet we will be able to work with that. Um, I try to make two rings at a time. Why? I don't know, I just do. Um, you'll find that that's the answer for a lot of stuff that I do. Why do you do that? Uh, I don't know. I just kind of do. So then you just start, you just you just cut up a whole bunch of squares. If you have a design in mind that's cool. If you don't have a design in mind, that's okay. Um, Alright, here we go. <clears throat> I'm putting these together with super glue. It doesn't matter what kind of super glue that you use. Just make sure you use the stuff that's like really thin, thin watery type of stuff. I'm going to use this only because I want to use this bottle up and I'm going to go back to using um, the hot stuff. Oh, what do they call it? Satellite City's hot stuff. Original. It's because it's really thin and you want it to soak into the pores. So what I've done, as you can see, this is my center point. This is going to be the black ring in the middle and it'll go black, dark, light color, dark, reddish, um, lighter colored and then you'll notice that this ring has got a few more extra layers only just a couple of these lighter colored pieces of wood. Why? Because we'll make a men's and a women's set um, you want the man's to be a little a little wider um, but I and I, who knows it could change um, for any number of reasons. I like to end mine with a piece of uh, bird's eye maple um, just because it gives an interesting look to things and actually I don't know that I like that I don't think that's got enough fun stuff in it we'll use that one um, uh, it, now working with super glue make sure you're in a well ventilated area um, uh, 
I will tell you, use gloves. Make sure you've got eye protection on because you don't want to spill anything um, or have something come up and flip you and get super glue in your eye. Uh, but mucho, uh, mucho, uh, bueno. No bueno. It's not good. So, you know, this is fun um, until somebody gets hurt. Uh, so just be careful of that. Now, can we see this at all? Of course not. Let's do that. All right, layer number one. Here's the really technical part of this all. Not really. And some of this is just getting squirted on here and then I'm just using the tip to move it around. Have I mentioned you should be in a well ventilated area? Because CA glue gives off some just nasty type of fumage. And then you take this and it goes on like that. And then you take this and this. This is just a piece of piece of plastic and a piece of wood. And I'm just trying to get these two pieces as flat as I can for that super glue to dry. Now you can tell, have I gotten enough super glue on there? Yeah, why? Because it's coming through the pores. Whether you do this or not, it's totally up to you. Does it make any difference? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I alternate the grain pattern on it. Just like you would do if you were making plywood. I'll have the grain on one of them running north-south. And I'll have the grain on the one I lay on top of it to go east to west. That way you don't have a line along which it will be prone to break. Grain like this, grain like this, like that. So you've got your strength built into this. How sturdy are these? I don't know, we'll find out. I've got one and we'll just see how rough and tumble they are. All right, and here we are. That is our ring blank. And just for fun, I'm gonna put a little pressure on it. Am I super worried about the edges? Not really. I'm more worried about the ring around the center part. Now, this just happened to have run out of super glue. So now what I do is I go along and I just saturate the edge of this. that it's just uh, where there isn't any glue it's just going to wick right down in there just like so Accelerator, and we let it sit. Um, anyway, there it is. It's not uh, not a good looking thing right now, is it? Not really. Kind of like that. So one down, one to go. All right, we've got our two uh, sandwiches completed. They're dry. Um, 
Now we're going to hit the bandsaw and get the edges uh, squared up, trimmed up, and then we're going to start plotting out circles to start drilling. But, uh, two very important things you should remember. Number one is um, that when you are cutting anything that you have sealed or affixed with super glue or um, in any of its various forms, the thick stuff, the thin stuff, anything in between, um, is when you are cutting that, you are going to release fumes, um, just like if you were working with it. In fact, I think it's even worse. Um, I think the fumes that, that I get when I am just, um, when I'm gluing up these blanks uh, is not nearly as bad uh, as it is when I am in the shop and I'm cutting it on the bandsaw. So um, uh, I use uh, I use little uh, computer fans. There's a, a little teeny tiny breeze blowing across my my work area, and that helps solve it a little bit. Um, I have a big shop uh, fan up in the garage that even when it's I don't know what it is out there today, um, 25 degrees or whatever. Um, I, I've got that whenever I'm doing this. Um, I use that. Again, uh, be safe. Um, the second thing is that um, you, every once in a while you should um, make sure um, to mix up uh, what on and off means uh, because instead of getting footage of someone trimming off the sides of these, you'll get something really boring like this. All right, I got my stuff sanded off now. Let's sand one side flat to make it easier to draw upon. And this too will release fumes, which is, probably can't hear me very well, can you? Um, this too releases fumes when you're doing this and um, uh, it will get into the air and into your lungs and stuff like that. So again, take whatever precautions you see fit. Um, kids, I am totally spitballing all of this because it's kind of a work in progress and you're actually kind of seeing a little bit of R&D going on. All right, so there we go. Now we're going to drill this center hole out. We're going to cut away the excess and then we're going to go to the sander and start working the sander. Please remember that this stuff, whenever you work with it, is going to give off fumes and you need to adjust your um, PPE accordingly. Oh yeah, look at that. Set that right on there and we're golden. Golden, golden. Back inside and now I'm just going to, first thing I'm going to do is just sand the inside of these smooth. That's why you should always, always keep a bucket of naphtha around kids. the goo off on the inside. We're going to sand the inside of that nice and smooth. Um, and then we're just going to kind of final polish it. In here I'm just going to use a little bit of steel wool um, which is one of the few uses I've actually found for steel wool because if you use it anywhere around electric guitars that crap gets all over the place and I just find it easier to find a different way to do it. But that's just me. I know people around the world love it. 
I am not that guy. All right, sand it up, and look, I got all over my bench. Uh, something that I am going to mention is that um, this is just, first of all, it's just the way I do stuff. Um, I'm always looking for new and better ways to do stuff. I'm always looking for ways to use scraps and leftover pieces that come from my other projects. I've seen, uh, I've seen videos where people have finished these with super glue and I did a test with it and I just don't like it. I think a few coats of true oil make a much nicer look. Um, it really brings out the beauty of the wood. So anyways, first coat really heavy. I just keep putting it on until it stops sucking it up. It's not going to suck up too much of it because um, we have just saturated it with the super glue. And uh, so this is definitely not like just putting it on, on raw wood. Now, let's see. Can we see why I like to put the bird's eye maple on the end of that ring? I think it's kind of nice. I'm somewhat biased. Um, so anyways, we'll put a number of coats on it. Um, and number of coats, I mean, I'll, I don't know, on these I won't do a whole lot. Four or five, maybe six coats at the most. Um, and then I'll put a couple of coats on the inside of it. You definitely want to finish it with something. Um, because what you don't want to do is um, give it to someone and, uh, and have the thing absorb up some water and swell and split and all that kind of stuff. Um, now, the other thing is, um, I like my ring. I think it's kind of cool. My wife really likes her ring. That's even more important. Um, uh, is there a better way to do it? Yes. Do I know what that way is? Eh, not right now. Um, Although, if you point me somewhere, um, you know, I'm, I'm all learning on how to do stuff like this. This was, uh, this was Valentine's Day. It's a gift for me to my lovely wife. Um, so, if it's perfection, she doesn't really care. Um, she enjoys the fact that I took time out of my days um, to make her something, something unique. Um, so, anyways, there you go. Um, rings out of leftover veneer easy project if I can do it you can do it there you go cheers have a good one hey folks thanks for watching the train wreck we appreciate you being along for the ride make sure you like rattle Cane guitar restorations over on the Facebook the Twitter as well as the Instagram if you haven't done so, go ahead and like us over on the YouTubes. We're posting new videos every Wednesday, and you never know what you're going to see around here. Thanks again for watching, folks. Have a good one.